Right, year 11. Our last bit of the syllabus. But I left you doing these questions. So let's um, zoom through these questions. I'm just going to talk through them. Um, so pause the video now if you've, if you've studiously wrote all your answers out. Well done. If you just went through and made a mental note of them, that's fine. Again, um, only do what, what you can do. Anyway, number one, name the fungus that is high in, that is high in protein that is used to make coin. Yeah, and coin's a type of mycoprotein. If you study mycology, you study fungi. Well, that was fusarium. Bizarrely, it's in the syllabus. We technically have to know it. Number two, which organelle makes proteins? You do it in year nine. We did it a bit ago as well. So ribosomes make proteins by joining amino acids. Uh, three, describe how protein is digested in the human body. So what's the enzyme? Protease. What's it breaks it break down proteins into amino acids? Where does that take place? Well, it's not in the mouth, stomach, or small intestine. So you can say protease might be made by the stomach, um, digests it into amino acids. Three marks. And then name three biomolecules that are made of protein. Really, they are proteins. So remember enzymes, they're you know probably are more most talked about protein in biology or enzymes. Um, um, antibodies, remember those antibodies in the news at the moment are antibodies, antibody tests and all that. That's a, a protein. Um, you can talk about um, parts of our muscles, contractile proteins. So if you said muscle, you'd get a more like a GCSE. Um, you can also, the, the other one on the syllabus is collagen as well. That's like the glue between cells. It's why you need vitamin C to make collagen. But I have a feeling there's another protein. Oh, yes. Um, hormone, some hormones like insulin. That's the uh, fifth protein. Um, so, yeah, so there's going to be demand for more proteins. There's a risk of new pathogens. Name a virus and a fungus that infects some plants. Well, the virus, that's TMV, tobacco mosaic virus. And the fungus is rose black spot. Again, just knowledge. Number two, the virus. The virus causes loss of chlorophyll. I'll explain why an infected plant will, will grow slowly. Well, if there's less chlorophyll, it can absorb less light. Less light, less photosynthesis. Less photosynthesis equals less glucose made. That's three marks. And then I, you need to use page if the car in our book. Last time I'll ever mention it. Um, and therefore, yeah, glucose is needed to make starch or cellulose or proteins. Something to do for there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, less light absorbed, photosynthesis, glucose, and then don't forget how, how that relates to growth. You can even, even say um, there's more glucose to fuel respiration for energy. You can say that as well. So you can't say um, that yeah, there's, there's less light, less photosynthesis, therefore less energy. You have to take the step to make less glucose, less energy, because there's less fuel for respiration. Three, suggest why people may not wish to eat GM crops that make their own pesticides. Yep. Again, I'm, I'm more than happy to eat a GM crop that's got a gene from a blackberry in it that gives me more nutrients. But if it contains a pesticide, I might be worried about the long term health effects. So, yeah, has it been tested? Um, what are the long term effects of eating this crop that has a pesticide? Again, it, it may be fine. You know, um, caffe caffeine is a pesticide, a natural pesticide. So is cocoa. Yeah. And we eat chocolate. We have coffee. Cheers. Still too hot. Still too hot. Don't risk it. It's not worth. It's not worth a sore tongue for. Her. And then I can't have crisps. I love crisps. Well, I can have crisps after my tongue re tongue recovers, obviously. Anyway, I'm branched off onto tongues. Next one: environmental change. Yeah. Um. The, the, this more population will get more environmental change. So, which two gases are increasing in the atmosphere? Are well, linked to global warming. So you know, there's water vapor that causes global warming, but that's constant. So we're talking carbon dioxide methane. They're the two gases that are being released. Give a reason for the increase of each gas, CO2. Well, we're burning fossil fuels. We're burning less at the moment, which is always good. Um, and methane, again, that comes from either rice cultivation, because there's anaerobic. Remember, you need anaerobic conditions for methane production. So you can either go for rice production or um, cattle. So if you cattle, they eat lots of plants, it goes into their multi-chambered stomach, anaerobic decay takes place, and then they belch or burp loads of methane. So 
which are the yeah um, farming animals like um, mainly cows and um, they're the the big methane producers um and um what's it called what's it oh yeah burning fossil fuels um you know you know termites release loads and loads of methane but that's environmentally they're probably being wiped out because of the losing habitat rather than they're, they're becoming um, um increasing because of human activity three suggest how global warming is linked to a threat to food security well if the world gets warmer we get climate change therefore we can get failed harvests or desert spread um, anything linked to you know the harvest fails um, and four, how can we be confident that global warming is due to human activity? Again, we can you can look at the data. Again, pe people deny it, but you can look at the graph. We have ice cores where we've got CO2 trapped in bubbles that we can measure throughout Earth. Well, throughout a lot of Earth history, and then you can see when when we started farming, there was a, a massive increase in CO2 production because the human population increased. At, because there was more food um, and yeah it's the, it's the rate of increase of co2 in the atmosphere um really is really compelling evidence again you know these people who say no it's just a natural cycle but um again have a look at the data yourself and um yeah see if you find it compelling as well um and then lastly yeah the cost of agricultural agricultural inputs is going to increase so name the mineral iron given to plants to increase their protein production. Yeah, so what do I give to plants to make them make more proteins? Well, I put on nitrates. Nitrates means that they can make glucose um, and therefore they can make more protein. Did I say make more glucose? If it's nitrates, they can react it with glucose and make more amino acids and therefore make proteins. Um, lack of which mineral iron causes chlorosis, white patches. Well, they lack chlorophyll. Therefore, that's um, down to the lack of magnesium ions. You need, there's a magnesium ion at the centre of um, chlorophyll. And suggest two things a farmer should consider before applying fertiliser to the soil. So he's a farmer or she's a farmer. They are farmers. They're worried about money. So, yeah, is it going to be cost effective? Is it, so not the cost of the fertiliser. Um, it's how much the plants grow extra in relation to the cost of the fertiliser. So cost effectiveness is the easiest way of saying that. And then the other one is, well, they put on the fertiliser and then it rains. What might happen? Well, it could be leached into the water and therefore it can cause eutrophication. OK, where you get the algae production and therefore you lose the option from the water. So, yeah, um, there'll be they should consider the weather forecast because if it if it rains a they're going to have a polluting effect and b they're going to lose the fertilizer that they've just spent money up and, and and money applying it so they, they have to buy it and apply it to the field both cost money and therefore yeah they did lose money but yeah there's an environmental impact and a cost benefit thing but all those are really you know if those are making sense then i've done my job because um, you know they are it sprawls through the syllabus um and again if you were sitting the exam it'd be a good sign that you were ready for it, ready for the exam anyway uh, last bit in the syllabus i said that, that i'd go through just uh, putting genes into plants because we've gone through how to put a gene into a bacterium to make insulin and we did that when I, when we we're actually in class um and it just crops up again in topic seven so that was part of topic six where we do all the genetic stuff um, it also crops up with crops in topic seven. So this is um, showing golden rice. So this is normal rice that we tend to eat. And this isn't, you know, rice that's got saffron in it or tu or turmeric, 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 turmeric. No idea which is which. Anyway, either that that yellow coloured spice. This has just got more beta carotene in it, which is the kind of the chemical that makes carrots orange. OK, so they've taken the gene out of a plant similar to carrot and they popped it into rice. So we've got um, rice that now makes lots of vitamin D or a chemical that means that we can make more vitamin, more vitamin D. Um, so it's really, really, really good for you because a lot of people who are eating rice um, struggle to get protein um, and um, 
yeah, it's, it's going to link to all that. Anyway, we're going to go through this 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 diagram. So we're going to go through the diagram in a minute. So this is the aim to cut the gene for high carotene production out of the out of an amaranth plant's DNA and transfer it to rice plants. Rice is a staple food in many people in developing countries and increases the carotene level will enable people to make yeah yeah. I was talking about, about vitamin D for it. It's vitamin A and avoid deficiency diseases. So you need vitamin A for it's a classic, you know, good eyesight, but it's also linked to the immune system as well. So here's our gene that we've cut out of an amaranth plant, and we're, and, and we're going to go through two ways of getting that gene into this cell. Okay, so when we cut it out, what do we do to cut out genes? We use a famous protein, an enzyme. Excellent. So let's do the A route first, because th this is what we've kind of done. We then put it into a vector called a plasmid. How do I stick the gene? into the plasmid, ignore TI, it's just a type of plasmid. Um, how do I stick it in? We use a very important protein, an enzyme, okay? Um, the trouble is, is that we can't get plasmids into plant cells. Bacteria, you can get plasmids into bacteria. You just kind of heat shock them, make, make them very cold, make them warm, and they get leaky, um, and they take in plasmids. And plant cells don't do that. Um, therefore, I need something that can put genes into plant cells, and therefore we use this thing called agrobacterium, a type of bacterium that invades plant cells. So we get the plasmid into the bacterium, and we know how to do that from a previous topic. We just kind of heat shock them. Then we infect the plant cell with the bacterium, and then the, the plasmid goes into the plant cell, and therefore I've now transformed the plant cell. I've got a genetically modified plant cell. So this is the old method, yeah, um, and it took us to discover agrobacterium to discover this. If you ever see a, a tree with a big lump on the side, it's probably got an agrobacterium infection. Um, a faster way, but a more kind of damaging way, is to take the gene, make copies of it, which is really easy, it's called PCR. It's how we're testing people's like swabs when they kind of go for those swab tests for the virus. They're using PCR to amplify the viral DNA to test for it. Um, and then we they load that gene onto gold particles. These are our little bullets. We load them into a gene gun, and then there, those little bits of gold are fired into the cell. Because gold is dense, it just penetrates the cell wall, it gets through the cell membrane, and therefore the genes are then inside the plant cell. It's again, it, it's a bit destructive, um, therefore, we then have to screen the cells. So you you do this to lots of cells under a microscope. Again, it's not a gun that you can see. It's a it's a you know it's a, it's a an addition to a microscope, but you know it's firing things into a cell. So they call it a gun to to make it sound all gangster, I guess. Anyway, C screening for the cells with transgene. Again, we are they then look for the cells that have got. Again, it's hard to see, but there's a there's a cell here with an extra little black bit. That's the new gene. OK, um, and then job done. So let's see how we do on the questions. No one says describe two ways of producing a GM rice cell. Well, that's where in the exam it's described. They give you a diagram. You just basically say what it shows in the diagram. So what I've been talking through would be describing how, you know, it put it, put it into a plasmid. The plasmid gets put into a bacterium. The bacterium infects a cell. I describe one way load it onto gold, put the gold into a, into a gene gun, fire the gold into the cell. That's the other way. OK, the testing. Can you understand a diagram with lots of information? And they often do that to make you look at the diagram as well, because they're going to ask other questions later, later on. Number two, describe how thousands of adult rice plants can be made from a transformed cell. So I've got my one cell. How do I make it start to, well, and give it nutrients so it starts to reproduce? But how do I make it form root cells and leaf cells? Yeah, how can I make it differentiate? I have to give it a chemical that makes the cell change its behaviour. It's the same chemical that, that makes shoots bend over, or not, or grow over. So yeah, you give it plant hormones, things like auxin, rooting powder. Remember all those hormones from topic six? Um, gibberellins, we had to do about ethene and auxin. Auxin is the only one that we had to know in detail. Uh, but it mentions rooting powder as, as a yeah as a hormone that causes roots to develop. 
suggests why one cell is modified rather than trying to modify an adult plant. Why have we gone to one cell? Why have I not got my gene gun and pointed it at this plant instead, this adult plant? Well, an adult plant's made of you know billions of cells. Trying to transform every single cell would be impossible. Okay. However, if we transform one cell and then that cell reproduces, we can make sure that every cell in the plant contains the new gene. So it fills the plant completely with that new gene and therefore um, the whole of that plant will make the, um, the new protein. So you know, if we're going to do this to, to rice, I want the rice, the actual seed from the grass, rice is a grass, to contain the gene. Um, and therefore, you know, the, the, the entire plant will contain the gene and therefore contain the protein. Um, four, evaluate golden rice as, as a food for people in developing countries. So, yeah, why is it good? Well, it stops a vitamin A deficiency, um, which, yeah, so it gives them more vitamin A. I just take it from the information. Therefore, avoids deficiency diseases. I'd probably say, therefore, they'll stay healthier. Um, what's the bad parts of it? Again, I'm taking a gene from something that we eat, putting it into something that we eat. But, you know, who knows? There might be long term health effects from eating this. OK, um, you know, one that we haven't done about that we do more at A level is talk about, you know, that, you know, this will be patented. Yeah, as in a company's done this and therefore they'll sell it. Um, I think I think they've made it kind of free now, this technology, because the they're being altruistic and want to help people in developing countries. Um, however, for some of these things, it's controlled by a agrochemical company who are making a profit, and therefore you've got a company who are controlling food supply. So that's yeah. Uh, again, we watched a video that Koenigsegg video that talks about big pharma and um, yeah yeah companies that are control uh, that, are, that are controlling, and that's why a lot of people protest against these big big companies. I think Monsanto is a famous American company that is always protested against because they control people's food supply. Um, explain why rice cultivation is linked to climate change. So back to what we did on the previous one. When you cultivate rice, it's growing in paddy fields. That's underwater. So the roots are underwater. You get dead leaves. You get lots of detritus. So you get anaerobic decay. So what gas do you get when you get anaerobic decay? You get lots of methane. And methane causes global warming, and therefore global warming is linked to climate change. So yeah, you talk about methane production um, causes global warming. So two things there. Um, oh yeah, you, you talk about the, the fact that it's grown in paddy fields underwater, therefore anaerobic. Anaerobic, methane, global warming. So global warming puts more energy into the atmosphere and therefore causes the climate to change. You get more extreme events. I think that's it. It is. There's a drawing challenge there. Again, you can pause it and have a go at it. Um, and I'll, I'll pop through. I'll pop through that on Friday. But um, now it's really we're into revision. Um, I know we know that the vast majority of us won't do an exam anyway. But we'll um, we're, we're doing it anyway. If you plan on doing it, A level biology. It's keeping your biology brain active. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing now on the news just the, you know, the importance well, during this pandemic, the every everything that's going to save us is biology, isn't it? You know, it's um, you know, it's making vaccines, testing. It's all biology, biology. Everything I'm teaching to year thirteen in, in like the, the last topic is 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 exactly what we're doing. Year twelve, we've just done about you know um, how vaccines work and how antibodies work. So yeah, it's um. If you're doing biology as an A level, you, you picked, a, picked a good one because there's going to be, you know, this country is definitely going to put more money into that area in the future because we well, we can't go through this again, can we? So I shall leave it there. I, I, I finish with, with a bit of a, a plug for biology there. But it is the best subject beginning with B. Apart from business studies. Who knows? Take care.